This is the CGP Paper Foundation Practice Set 2, Paper 3. What fraction of the shape is shaded? 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9. 9 out of total of 25 squares. What's the ratio of shaded squares to unshaded? So we've got shaded here to unshaded. 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11, 12, 13, 14, 15, 16, 17. Unshaded. 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8. So we're looking at 17 to 8. What's the percentage of the shape that is shaded? 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11, 12, 13. So we have 13 shaded uh, squares out of 25 in total. So we're looking for a percentage. We have a calculator, so use it. 13 divided by 25 is 0 0.52. 0 0.52, we multiply that by 100, gets us to 52%. This is a recurring decimal, which means that we write, can write it as forever. Four decimal places. This is the first decimal place, second, third, and fourth. Draw the dotted line. It's six, so we're rounding this number up one. 0 0.6667. Don't need to pad it out. In fact, we'll get the wrong answer if we pad it out. So we're going to write this number. These two dots here means that we've got 0 0.82828282. Doing the same again, four decimal places. One, two, three, four. Dotted line in here. Eight means we round up, so we're 0 0.8283. Two fair spinners. Numbers are one to four. These are number four. This is our sample space uh, diagram here. It causes the sample space here. We're adding these two numbers together. So we could put a, a plus here. We're adding one and one. Two and one makes three. Three and one makes four. So we have to fill in the missing numbers. Two plus two is four. Three plus two is five. Two plus three is five. Three plus three is six. Four plus three is seven. What's the probability? of scoring a total of eight when the spinners are spun. We only have one eight. This is an eight. We don't have any more. So it's one divided by well, probability. Probability can be a fraction, a ratio, sorry, not a ratio, not a ratio, a fraction, a decimal or, or a percentage. We've got a total number of outcomes of 16. Four multiplied by four gives us 16. So the probability of scoring a total of eight is one divided by 16. You can put it into calculator if you want, you don't have to. Order form for some sports equipment. These are the number. So we take the four, we're multiplying by 4.89, which gives us 19.56. We need to know how many seven pounds and 35 go into uh, tw 22 pounds 05. So we take 22. 05 and we're dividing it by 7.35 so we're, we're taking 22.05 and we're dividing it by 7.35 which gives us 3 and that's what we write here 3. Um, we know that the total here so we can find out this here because we're going to add these together to make uh, you add these three numbers together to make 57 so I'm going to take 19 pounds and 56 pence and I'm going to add it to 22 pounds and 5 pence which gives us 41 pounds and 61 now that isn't the answer that goes in here what we have to do is take that away from 57 pounds and a penny take away 41.61 I'm going to use the answer button here 57.01 subtract the answer which is what I had here 41.61 which gives us 15 pounds remember it's 15 pounds and 40 pence 
and there's a pound sign make sure you do that rather than just 15.4 and then we need to do this again uh, so we've got 15 40 and we're going to divide by 7 we're going to divide that by 7 which gives us two pounds and 20 pence this is 2.2 and that turns into two pounds and 20 pence that will give us three marks now this is a highest common multiple question no a lowest common multiple a lowest common multiple we look at every three days all the multiples of three six nine twelve eighteen twenty one twenty four and now look at the multiples of seven seven fourteen twenty one aha i now have twenty one in both columns so we're looking at twenty one days she buys both items on the 1st of September and then we're looking at 21 days later. Now the first day later will be the 2nd of September. So what we're doing is we're adding 21 onto the 1st. 21 onto the 1st will make 22. So the 1st plus 21 equals 22. There are 22 days in September so it's 22nd of September. find 159% of 350. So what we're, we're doing here, we're taking uh, uh, 350 and we are multiplying it by, now 158 as a percentage, as a decimal, is 1.58 because what we're doing is we are dividing by 100. So this is the number that we put into our calculator. 350 multiplied by 1.58 gives us 553. It's not a, a pound or anything, so we just write 553 here. Question 7. The graph shows the cost of hiring a crane. Building company hires a crane and is charged £6,000. This is our £6,000 here. How many weeks did they hire the crane? Well, with a pencil, we can draw a line. Now make it, make sure it's, it's accurate. And we draw down from that line and we read off the scale. Eight weeks. Use the graph to find the cost of hiring a crane for six weeks. So this time we're going from six here. So exactly the same, but we do it in the opposite way round. Now we're going to be as accurate as we can along here. I'd say actually I've made it a little bit high and this should be about halfway. You will have a measure of, of leaving at sea. But for me this is halfway between 4,000 and this would be 5,000. So halfway between 4,000 and 5,000 is 4,500. Zero, zero. Find the gradient uh, of the line. What we're doing is looking at the change in y. The change in y divided by the change in x. So we, we, if we choose this point here, this eight weeks, what's the change in x? Well, the change in x is eight. This, we're looking at this triangle here. The change in X is 8, the change in Y is 6,000, and then the gradient equals the change in Y divided by the change in X, which is 6,000 divided by 8. Sorry. I'll go back through that again. So I've drawn a triangle here. The change in Y is 6,000. This is the change here in Y. Here we've got the change in X, which is eight. So this is the change in X here. We're looking at this um, blue triangle here. The gradient is the change in Y divided by the change in X, which gives us 6,000 divided by eight. 
uh, we can put that into our calculator. 6,000 divided by 8 gives us 750. What's the units? The gradient, oh no, um, the gradient of the line is just 750. What does the gradient tell us about how much it costs? It means that we, uh, it, uh, it, it tells us how much how much it costs to hire the crane per week. Question eight. So this is substitution. We have our formula V equals U plus A T and remember there is a an invisible multiplication between here and we're just going to put that in brackets just to make it really clear that those two uh, have to be done together. We're using uh, bid mass with this as well. So we have to do the things in, in this order. Um, you can choose whether you put the brackets on or not. Uh, I'm just showing that we do have to do the divide and multiply in this case uh, before we do the addition and subtraction which is here. The first thing we need to do is to substitute in these values here. So V equals U is 3, so we put a 3 instead of the U. We add A is 2 multiplied by T, which is 4. 2 multiplied by 4. Bidmas says that we have to do the divide multiply first. V equals 3 plus 8. 3 plus 8 is 11, so V equals 11. Find the value of u when t, uh, a and v are these values. Now this time we have to do some rearranging. So I'm going to do it with the uh, letters to start with. v equals u plus a t. So we need to get u on its own. Am I going to do it? No, I'm going to substitute first. So we know that v is 13.2 equals u plus a, which is 0 0.5, multiplied by t, which is 3. So I've got 13.2 equals u plus 3 lots of 0 0.5. Put it into calculator. 3 multiplied by 0 0.5 is 1 and a half. And then what we've got is a u here. Something plus 1.5 equals 13.2. One thing we can do is uh, rearrange. So we can take, if you can't see that answer or you don't know how to work it out, we can take away 1.5 from both sides. So we left with U on this side because we've got 1.5, subtract 1.5. And then if we type in what's here, 13.2 subtract 1.5, which gives us 11.7. Uh, and that is the answer, 11.7. The ratio of number paid for to free apps. So this is paid for and this is free, is 3 to 5. What fraction of the apps on Matilda's tablets were free? So we're looking at this value here, but we're also looking at the total number of, of apps. We have to take 3 plus 5 equals 8. There are 8 parts in total. 5 of those parts are free. So we're looking at a fraction 5 divided by 8. 5 eighths. The ratio of number games apps to non games apps, it, so this is games to non games, is 2 to 7. She has 72 apps altogether. So we're looking at two boxes here we're looking at seven one two three four five six seven apps here seven parts seven boxes two boxes and seven boxes each of those boxes are the same we take our two plus our seven which is nine there are nine boxes all together so we take our 72 and we divide by nine gives us eight but you can put that into calculator 72 divided by nine equals eight that means there are eight in each of these boxes here. How many app game apps? That's these apps just here. 
2 multiplied by 8 or 8 plus 8 equals 16 so there are 16 non uh, sorry game apps on her phone question 10 points a and b are shown on the coordinate grid below mark points c and d to show that a b c d is a square so i'm going to draw in here just so you can see the square you don't have to actually draw the square on here what it's asking you to do is to mark a c a c it doesn't actually matter which way around a c b and d find the equation of the straight line passing through points a and b okay so we're looking at the a line that goes along between here and here We're going to use the gradient. The gradient is one across, one up. So the change in y divided by the change in x is one divided by one, which is one. This is your m. We're looking at the, this is m, which is the gradient. y equals mx plus c. So we know the equation is going to be y equals x. It's There's a one in here, an invisible one we're just going to leave it as x and then we're looking at c this is the y intercept this is the gradient so the y intercept where does it cross the uh, y-axis well it crosses at one so the equation is y equals x plus one eleven We've got this information here. Now the key number is 360. Uh, we need to know how many each sandwich, how many degrees each sandwich is. So we're going to add these numbers together. We're going to use our calculator. 15 plus 20 plus 30 plus 25 gives us 90. So there are 90 sandwiches altogether. We have our 360 and we divide by 90. 360 divided by 90 gives us 4. So each sandwich, 4 degrees per sandwich. So to find out the degrees for each of these, we have to multiply by 4. And put that into our calculator. 15 multiplied by 4 is 60. 20 multiplied by 4 is 80. 120 and 100. These should, I'm going to check it to make sure they add up to 360. And there we go, they do add to 360. Use your calculator, use your calculator. So what I'm going to do here is measure each of these sections here. So I put, I'm going to make, make this spot, it's actually quite big, I'm going to make it a little bit bigger anyway. I'm going to line up the zero I'm not looking at 180 here, I'm looking at the zero on the outside of my line and this spot right uh, in the centre of my protractor, I'm going to put it here. Now, the first uh, I'm going to mark is, is 60, I'm going to do it with a pencil, just in case I make a mistake and I need to rub it out. So this is 60, and I mark in here. Now I'm going to, going to mark it on as egg mayo as well. So I don't forget which one is which. And I'm going to do the get. Lining up here, I'm looking at 80 this time. So line up my zero and count round the outside. I'm going round to 80 on the outside. Again on the outside. I'm 
and make sure you measure the last one as well just to make sure that you've done done it correctly it brings me up to about 100 I wasn't as accurate as I could have been um, but that will be accurate enough for what we're doing here if it's way off rub it out and start again This two-step function takes an input x and outputs this. So the input here, output, fill in the boxes. So what are we doing to x? Well, the first thing we have to do to x is we have to add 5, and then we are dividing by 12. I do that in pen. They have to be that way round. You're not dividing by 12 first, you are adding 5. If you're not sure, uh, think about bid mass. In which order do you have to do things? But bid mass isn't helpful in terms of the order. We have to do it in reverse. What are we doing first? Well, we have to add the five first. This is an indices question. We have the same basis and we need to leave that base alone. We don't need to put this into our calculator. Uh, this one we, we need to think about without putting it into our calculator because we need it to be a power of 9 at the end and if we put it into our calculator we don't get that power of 9. So our indices law says that if we are multiplying two together we add the indices together. If we're multiplying this and this and the same base we take our 17 and we add our 6 which if you can't do that in your head it's a good idea to check it anyway. 17 plus 6 is 23. 9 to the power 23. So this can be written as 9 to the power 23 divided by 9 to the power 2. And then if we, we are taking 9 to the 23 and we are dividing by 9 to the power 2, what we do is we take our 23 and we subtract 2. And that is our answer. Fourteen. Now, I like to call these questions spot the isosceles triangle. If you've got little lines, then it's a good idea to work out where your isosceles triangle is. Remember, the qualities of an isosceles triangle mean that these two angles here, if you take the two lines that are the same, you take your fingers and you trace them down to the, the corners, these two angles here and here are the same. This angle here and this angle here are the same. So that the angle FDE equals, so FDE, which is actually this one here, this is, this is uh, one of the angles that we're dealing with, I'm just going to call it a 1, and the angle BED, BED, this here, are the same. So we need to show that the angle FDE, this is our 1 and this is our 2, are the same. We can't just state it and we can't just use uh, the, the reasoning. We have to actually calculate them and I'm going to label my diagram with the different, uh, different angles. So first of all I'm actually going to draw out this isosceles triangle because I can use the information in this diagram to tell me all about the different angles. This is my E, this is my F and this is my D. This is 108. We know that uh, angles inside a triangle sum add up to 180 degrees. That's what sum means. So therefore we can, and we know that um, an isosceles, I think that's spelt wrong, there's a C in it somewhere, triangle has two equal sides and two equal angles. 
So therefore what we're going to do here is we're going to take 180 degrees and we're going to subtract 108. gives us 72. So these two angles here added together make 72 and therefore we take 72. This is an isosceles triangle, have two equal sides and we're going to divide by two. We take our 72 and we divide by two which gives us 36. So these two angles here, that means this is 36 degrees and this one equals 36 degrees as well. So we've now shown that, that one of those angles is 36. We're now going to use the other part of this diagram to show, hopefully, that this is 36. We have to do it with, um, uh, with the, uh, angle facts, the things that we know. Here and here, we've got, we know that these are vertically opposite. So using the vertically opposite, equal, therefore that, that one is at 80 degrees, so therefore angle EBD equals 80 degrees. And then we've got a triangle. It's not an isosceles this time. We only have one length as, that's the same. Um, but we can then use the angles inside a triangle, sum to 180. No need to write it again, but I am going to draw the diagram. Let's sketch it just so that we know what we're talking about. 64 degrees here, 80 degrees here. We take our 180. Oh, no, the first thing we're going to do is we're going to add them together. 180, add 64. sorry, 80, add 64 equals 144, and then we take that away from 180, which gives us 36 degrees, which is what we wanted in the first place. So this is 36 degrees. Um, therefore, angle, um, so I'm going to call this angle B E D equals 36 degrees and this one here is angle F D E therefore angle F D E equals angle sorry angle B E D I'm just going to leave it on the page just so you can catch up with that bit that was off the screen sorry about that Pause if you need to. Okay, following all types of sequences, choose a word from the box that describes each of those sequences. This one is because um, it jumps in three, so you add three, add three, it's an arithmetic. This is because you to get the next term, you add the two before, add these two to get three, Add two and three to get five, add three and five to get eight. This one here is a geometric sequence. Because, so here you are adding three, and here you are dividing by two. So arithmetic is when you add, geometric is when you divide or multiply. So, January 2010, he bought the flat for 9,500. Each year he bought it, the value rose by 6.5, so the multiplier is 1.065. So we've got uh, 950, uh, uh, so in 2011, I'm going to do this step by step. So 2011, we take the 95 and we multiply it by 1.065. You can do this with, with compound interest. I'm going to do this just slowly with um, this, uh, doing a, a step uh, a calculation each time. So at the end of this, we have 
2013. So this was uh, at the beginning in January 2011, the beginning of 2000. So this is 10, this is 11, this is 12, this is 13, and we want to get to 14. So we need to do this each time multiplied by 1.065 gives us 1065. We don't want to create uh, rounding errors yet, so we're just going to write out everything that we've got here. So this is the value at the end of 2014. So this is the end, end of 2010, 11, 12, 13, and then this is January 2014. And what we, we are going to do is we are going to round it. No, we need to go once again. So that's what you do then. Let's just go back. So this is the answer here. This here is the answer here. So this is the value at the end of 2011. Sorry, I've gone about this in a, in a long winded way. And I think I might have confused. I certainly confused myself. So this is the end. This is January 2011. This is January 2012. This is January 2013. So we now need to multiply by 0.165 again. And this is the value that we're looking at. We need to round this figure to the nearest £100. So this is our nearest £100 just here. We need to round it here. One, two, two. This doesn't round up to. We have to go to the um, with zeros up to the, the decimal point and then we write this figure. Just to show you the uh, faster way of getting here, we're looking at going from 2010, we're looking at one, two, three, four years. So we can use the compound interest formula. We can take our 95000 zero, 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 multiplied by our multiplier, 1.065 to the power of four, which gives us 95000 zero, 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 multiplied by one zero. 6, 5 to the power of 4. So we use this button. I'll write that in again. To the power of 4, which gives us the answer that we needed to begin with. 177. 12221430333. That's the same value as we had just here. So a lot faster to do it this way. Um, start there if you choose to if you can see it's compound interest if not work it through step by step draw a line showing all the points that are the same distance from book sands and clement point what we need to do is we need to bisect the line between the two i'm actually going to use a ruler if i can find my ruler book sands to Clement point. We need to bisect this line. Make sure it's just over halfway. Draw some construction lines. And then I'm going to stick with a pencil. I think you can see it okay. I'm going to draw a line here. Draw a line showing all the points at the same distance from Bookstands. Construction lines must be clearly visible. So this line here would give you two points here. Scale on the map is one centimetre to two kilometres. Calf 
cafe is located 10 kilometers. So we've got 10 kilometers here, 10 kilometers. Uh, so one centimeter equals two kilometers. So if we're looking at 10 kilometers, we've multiplied by five to get to 10 kilometers. So therefore we have to multiply this by five. So five centimeters is 10 kilometers. So what we need to do is to set our compass our pair of compasses to five centimetres. So this is now five centimetres. We're then looking, it's within 110 kilometres of Port Warren. So we've got Port Warren up here. And we know that our cafe must be on the island, somewhere within that curve there. The cafe is closer to Clement Point than Buck Sands. So we have this line here. Uh, I'm actually going to kind of colour it in. This is the line that we're interested in. This line here shows the exact, it's equidistant, it's exactly the, the equal from Buck Sands to Clement Point. And we're told that this cafe is closer to Cat Clement Point than Buck Sands. So we're looking at this side of the line. Um, so we're looking at that side of the line. And we need the cafe to be uh, 10 kilometres within Port Warren. So it has to be within some this area here. So I'm going to shade in. Uh, obviously, you do this with a, a pencil. But this is the area that we are looking for. Make sure you don't go a line, uh, across the line at the top. This is the area that you need to shade in. And that will give you five marks. A banquet of 16, six people can be seated around a single rectangular table. How many people could be sitting around ten tables, sorry, four tables pushed together? Let's draw it. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven, and twelve. So now we're looking at what's the relationship between the the figures. So this is the number of tables. This is the number of chairs or people talking people so let's stick it at that so we've got one table and we've got six people two tables and we have one two three four five six seven eight people three tables and we've got six uh, three four five six seven eight nine ten and four we've got twelve so what's the relationship we are adding two people every time so how many seat pieces people could be seated around n tables so this is our n we know that when we've got a an arithmetic sequence that goes up that that we have to have 2n as part of our formula because we're going up in twos and then what i'm going to do is to write out what 2n would be on its own 2 multiplied by 1 is 2 2 multiplied by 2 is 4 2 multiplied by 3 6 2 multiplied by 4 is 8 we then work out what do we do to get from the two, this is our two nth sequence, to the one that we want, and each time we have to add four. So we're adding four here. How many people would need, how many tables would need to be pushed together to seat 32 people? Well, this, this we create, uh, we form an, exp, uh, an equation, 2n plus four equals 32, and then we solve. I'm going to subtract 4 from both sides and then we're going to divide both sides by 2. Fourteen tables. Question 19. The ratio of the number of faces, faces uh, of a cube, for instance, there are six faces. We can see three and there are three behind as well. Vertices are the, the points in the corner. So basically we're, we're looking at the corners here. 
For each shape, the ratio of the number of faces to the number of vertices can be written in the form 1 to 10, which shape gives a greater value. So we're going to look first at the hexagonal prism. Number of faces to the number of vertices. How many faces do we have? Well, there, there are six sides all the way around because we've got six uh, edges here one two three and three that we can't see four five six and then one at the end and uh, one at the other end so we have eight faces all together how many vertices will we have one two three four five six this side and six at the back as well so we have 12. so when we're looking at the hexagonal prism we have eight to twelve but we have to make this number one we do that by dividing by eight so here we have to divide by 8 as well. We get 12 divided by 8. So it's 1, 12 divided by 8. We can put that into our calculator. 12 divided by 8 gives us 3 over 2, which is also 1 half. So this is 1 to 1 half. This is 1 and this is a number. In this case, we're going to use a decimal. We could have used the fraction, but the decimal helps us to compare what we're looking at. So this um, is for a hexagonal prism. Let's have a look for the cube here. So we've got faces. I'll squeeze it into this corner here and we've got vertices. The faces, there are six faces and how many vertices? We have eight. So we want to take this down to one. We do that by dividing by six. We take eight and we divide by six. 8 divided by 6 gives us 1.33333. So we take 1 to 1.3333. Which shape gives the greater value of n? n is 1.5 here. Um, n is 1.333. So we've got 1.5 and 1.333. We could put zeros here. The 1.5 is greater. So which shape? It's the hex. It's a hexagon, it goes all the way back, it's a hexagonal prism. Right, we need to know the formula for the area of a trapezium. So we've got the vertical height, which is our H, we have our A. And we have our B here. So we now substitute in what we've got. So we've got a half. A which is 6 plus B which is 2x plus 4 multiplied by the height which is x plus 4. We're going to simplify this bracket here. It gives us 2x plus 10 x plus 4. Um, we need to fully simplify, so what we're going to do is use the grid 2x plus 10, x plus 4, we're going to multiply And then what we can do is we can take this half and we can divide everything uh, by two. We can halve everything in here. And that is our answer. Yep, centimetre squared we've got here. We don't need to put the brackets necessarily. Um, it gives us uh, the three marks. Quite a lot for three marks. So this is uh, a question about volume and area. So let's 
let's have a go she's got 200 grams of pastry when she rolls it to thickness she can cut out 42 discs how many discs can she cut out if the pastry is rolled th thicker so this is 0 0.25 this is 0 0.5 so we've we have we need to look at the relationship between the area and the volume or in this case the mass so what I'm going to do with this is create a table pastry thickness and discs we know we've got 200 grams and the thickness is 0 0.25 and we get 42 discs. Well, what happens if we had one gram? The thickness would be 0 0.25 centimetres, and we've got 42. What have we done to get from here to here? Well, we've divided by 200, so therefore we're going to divide by 200 here, which gives us 0 0.21. And then we're going to, to find out what um, 500 grams would be. 500 grams at 0.25. Um, no, I'm just going to pause. OK, I'm actually going to start that again. We've got 200 grams of pastry thickness of 0.25 if we double the thickness we halve the amount of discs that we can get through so with a thickness of uh, 0.25 she can so 0.25 0 0.25 she can cut out 42 discs so if we double if we we double this the thickness that means that we've got it's the relationship is inversely proportional so this time we have to divide by two which gets us to 21 we can if we double the thickness we can only cut out half as many so we have 21 discs now we're going to use the table a, a table to, to calculate this we're now looking at uh, double the amount of pastry and I need to be able to cut out 210 discs what thickness will the pastry be so we're going to look at what we've got already and then we're going to work out what happens if we move to 500 So to get from 200 to 500, what we're going to do is we're going to go via 1 gram. So we divide both sides by 200. We're still going to keep it at this thickness to start with. Um, we divide 42 by 200. Divide by 200, 0 0.21. And then what we're going to do is then multiply up to 500 grams. Still at 0 0.25. So it's still not the right number. At the moment, if we had a thickness of 0 0.25, we would end up with 105 discs. So what we, we now keep this value the same. Um, and this time we want to find out what a thickness we would need to create just one disc. We're going to bring this down to the unitary value. So we're going to divide by 105 to get one disc. And therefore we would take this and we divide in fact, no, we're not. It's it's this inverse, inversely proportional relationship. So if we uh, reduce, if we if we only want one disc, we can then it would then be 
uh, greater. So actually this time we are multiplying. You're going to earn your points for this one. Five points though. Uh, 0.25 multiplied by 105 gets us to 26. 2.5. What if I put grams here? So this would be 26. Now 26 is, is actually the whole, uh, virtually the whole length of a, a uh, ruler. Um, so it's a very, very thick pastry if we just wanted one disc. Um, but we do have 500 grams, which is half a kilo, which is a, a large amount of pastry. So what we're looking for is 210. We get there by, by yeah, multiplying this by 210, uh, which means that, that here we have to divide. So we take 26.25 and we divide this by 210 so we're dividing by 210 which gives us 26 divided by 210 which gives us an eighth which is also 0 0.125 500 grams we haven't changed that but we need it at 0 0.125 centimeters Twenty-two. We need to find the modal class. What's the modal class? Well, we can get it straight from here, which is the greatest number, 53, and then the modal class is this value written exactly as it is, is here. 53 is the greatest. We write this. Estimate for the mean. So the estimate means that we are looking at the midpoint multiplied by the frequency. So midpoint, midpoint of here and here is 145. If you're not sure how to work out the midpoint, you find the mean of these two values. So you take your 140, you add your 150, and then you divide by two, it gives us 145. And then what we're going to do is multiply these down. And we're going to use our calculator to find out what the frequency multiplied by the midpoint is. 2 multiplied by 145 gives us 290. 22 multiplied by 155. these together to find the total. I'm not convinced that's right. I'm just going to double check my answers. all these those figures in again where did I make the mistake 290 plus 3 4 10 Okay, so the total here is 16150 always a good idea to, to double check your answers particularly when you've got very large numbers in there calculate an estimate for the mean so the mean is the total 1615 of all the data. So this is everybody's, the 98 students all added together their heights would be this value here, 16150. And then we're dividing it by the total number of students. Now we're actually told it's 98, but if, if you wanted to do it from the table, then this added together, this free, the number of students is here. We take the 98 here and then we divide that. which gets us 164, Correct one decimal place is just here. This is our first decimal place. 
and then we round up because this is a 9, so we're rounding at 164.8. Explain why your answer to part B is only an estimate for the mean rather than the actual mean. Um, so we need to write And the last question, complete the table. I always use the zero to start with rather than going with the minus one, but you can put this into your calculator. This is zero, this is zero, so the answer for this will be two. If we're, we're now uh, entering this as x equals one, we're going two multiplied by one squared, subtract six multiplied by one, add two. This is the equation that we are, are looking at. If you're not sure what 1 squared is, put it into your calculator. It is just 1. 2 multiplied by 1 is uh, 2. Subtract 6 multiplied by 1 is 6 plus 2. And you can put that into your calculator. 2 subtract 6 plus 2 equals negative 2. So this is negative 2. We can do the same with x equals to 2. So we put that into here. Uh, 2 multiplied by 2 squared, 2 multiplied by 2 squared, subtract 6 multiplied by 2, add 2. 2 squared is 4, 2 multiplied by 4 is 8, subtract 12 plus 2. 8 subtract 12 plus 2 gives us negative 2. We put 3 in 2 multiplied by 3 squared, subtract 6, multiplied by 3, plus 2. 3 squared is 9, 2 multiplied by 9 is 18, subtract 6 multiplied by 3, and again, put these in individually, or put them in, in brackets, your choice, plus 2, 18 subtract 18, add 2 gives us 2. And then this one here, can you see the pattern? 2, subtract 2, subtract, uh, sorry, negative 2, negative 2, 2, and 10. It's a quadratic. It's going to be a curve, and this one will also be 10, but you can put it into your calculator and work it out. We then need to plot the values. Uh, we've got 0, y equals 2. We have 1, y equals 10. At x equals 1, y equals negative 2. I'll do this with a pencil. I'm certainly when I'm going to join the dots, I'm going to use a pencil. Right, we have to make this smooth and going through exactly all of the crosses. We don't need to go beyond uh, these two points here, actually. Not the prettiest curve, but it will do. Find the exact coordinates of the turning point, which means that we now need to factorise this value here. Uh, we know that, that it's going to be a 1 and a 2 here. We know that it's going to be a 2 and a 1. Which way round? Oh, they're both going to be minuses. Exact coordinates, the turning point. The turning point is when uh, y equals... No, that's wrong. 
looking at the turning point, the turning point is just here. We know that uh, the graph is symmetrical um, because we've got these values here. We're looking at halfway between these two points as the turning point when the, the graph will be flat. Halfway between here and here means that we're looking at x equals 1.5. And then what we do, we substitute in. So when x equals 1.5, y equals 2 multiplied by 1.5 squared, subtract. 6 multiplied by 1.5 plus 2. And you can put that all into your calculator. 2 multiplied 1.5 squared. I am going to put it in brackets. You don't technically need to, but I'm going to put it in brackets because it makes it easier to see. And I know that my calculator is definitely working correctly. There we go.